Welcome back to Death Toll Racing, episode 6 of our Twin Turbo Crown Vic build. Um, I'm going to start off by removing the exhaust, then putting it right back on, because I forgot to tack weld uh, all the way one of the uh, legs. So I have to get it all back put together so that I can get it lined up, tack it up, and then take it back down again. And then we're going to weld it up, uh, sand it, paint it, wrap it in fiberglass, and reinstall it. And we also will get to starting to permanently install some of our charge line, our, our intake tubing uh, in this episode. I'm sanding mine with 120. Uh, the directions on the paint that we're go going to use, which is the, uh, oh, what the heck is that called? Pour 15 high heat paint. Um, it says 320. Uh, I used one. I think it was 120 on it. Um, so I'm brushing it on. It didn't really apply very good with, with I used a cheap chip brush. Um, and then, uh, so I put the first coat on and the next coat, I use a higher quality brush. Um, that worked quite a bit better. Um, and really light pressure. Otherwise you're kind of, um, leaving scrat or, you know, lines in it that are all the way down to the metal. Um, so I wasn't having a very good time with brushing it. It is, I was trying, I didn't want to spray it, um, because I didn't want to cover everything and, you know, prep for spraying. So uh, I brushed it and it worked okay. It doesn't look perfect, but again, we're just wrapping it in fiberglass anyway, so it doesn't need to look very good um, as long as it as long as it works. And so I'm using two inch wide fiberglass um, as a wrap. I find it's a little easier than the big wide stuff. Um, the big wide stuff goes faster until you start getting to joints and stuff, and then uh, it starts becoming kind of difficult to uh, to wrap um, around there. So then in between. Every six inches or so, you end up putting a stainless steel zip tie. And when you do those things, it definitely helps to get the tool um, for for tightening those and cutting them. Um, because for some reason, if you just try to pull them by hand and then cut them with dikes, uh, they don't ever seem to lock very good. Uh, but when you use the tool, they lock real well. I think it's because of the bend it puts in them or something. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, pretty, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Wear gloves. Um, that it's it's like dealing with insulation uh you'll get fiberglass slivers all over i had a whole bunch of them on my arms just from doing this um but you know it is what it is All right, now we're now I'm permanently installing all our charge line. And remember, we have those little tabs on the side of the exhaust that uh, we are going to hang this by um, with a normal hose clamp, um, not not a turbo clamp. And then remember also when you're cutting these pieces together, you're going to have to flange everywhere. You're going to be putting a hose clamp or a clamp clamping the two pieces together or they will pop off. Um, you can't tighten them tight enough without having some sort of a barb on the end of the tube. Um, and so what I was doing is just using my uh, pipe expander for the exhaust, being really careful because you can't have a feel the resistance on opening up the aluminum and just opening just the end and then filing it so it's not sharp so it doesn't eventually cut through that silicone tubing. Um, so I got it up uh, and that, wor that worked out pretty good. And now I'm putting in our waste gates. And that's pretty self-explanatory as far as bolting them on, and we will get to uh, plumbing those in uh, to the boost lines and stuff um, in, in a later episode. All right, I had to end up rotating that around, um, the body of that a little bit, because the inlet pressure line on that wastegate on the driver's side there was pointing right at the floor. Um, so I took it apart and uh, made some adjustments.
All right, so uh, I'm using Spectre air filters uh, and then Spectre air filter bags, uh, the du the dust bags or whatever you want to call them. Uh, links to those are in the description below. Uh, Spectre really has up to their game as of recently. That that when I was younger used to be really junky stuff. Uh, it's pretty good now. All right, now we're going to work on our tailpipes. So um, that's the entire tailpipe that you're seeing me there. Um, they come welded on those turbos, which is really annoying because there's no way they would ever work for anyone's situation. Um, so I cut them off and we are going to re-weld them on. I'm just using normal wire here. You should be using stainless, um, but being that this is just a budget build and, and I was just being lazy, I didn't want to get out my stain. I didn't want to set up my welder for stainless, which requires running pure argon and then stainless wire. So um, other, otherwise, um, it'll work just fine doing steel. It'll just, the welds itself is going to rest now. Um, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, so what I did is I just pointed them um, exactly at where the rubber hits the road on the, on the, the front of the tire, where the tire is touching the road um, for effects on doing burnouts. Um, so we'll blow the smoke out um, of the tires. So just kind of appropriate placement for coolness uh, during burnouts. So here it is all done. Uh, it turned out really, really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with how it, how it turned out um, for, for just being all kind of knockoff um, cheap, cheap stuff. Uh, it will give us room to upgrade it later. Um, but we have the, the core of the system is pretty solid. So, uh, thanks for watching. We will see you again on Friday. And if you guys are wondering, the driveline does clear, um, in all situations, I, I did play with jacks and stuff, making sure that the driveline is never going to contact the exhaust. And also we need to make a plug still for our third wastegate hole, um, that we're not going to use. And maybe we'll be using here in an upcoming see if it works episode uh, to see if we can one, run a single wastegate for twin turbos.